What's up everybody, still at Indian of Oklahoma City and we're gonna go do another new bike review. Once again, Roadmaster Dark Horse, this time with Passenger. We're gonna introduce the Honey Badger. Wife is a little under the weather today, so she's gonna take her place as our passenger. She should be in the headset, so you should be able to hear her. Go ahead, Honey Badger. What's up? All right, this is her first time on here, so let's see what we got here. So, back to the Dark Horse. Of course, we got the chrome and black accents, the smoke paint job on this one. All the fun bells and whistles. You'll notice it's just a single toe shifter, so it doesn't have the hill toe, but it does have the fairing lowers. It does have everything else, and it does finally match the Chieftains in the fairing as well. And if you haven't seen my videos before on the Roadmaster, I'll go ahead and go through this information here because there's quite a bit going on. Of course, it does have little glove boxes down here. It does have these to open up these vents down here to help those uh, airflow in the hot summers. When you're looking around here, you do have this, and this contains your information or your cord for your uh, infotainment system, so that can be you put your phone in there or 3D, or uh, excuse me, or an SD flash drive, something like that. Any of those things will fit up in there. Go ahead and touch this. So we're going to go through the ride command system because there's quite a bit of stuff that happens with the ride command system. This is the more updated model. It has the traffic layers. It has the weather layer on it. I'm going to go ahead and drop my glove off real quick so I can touch it a little easier. This thing is huge. So it does work with gloves, but just how big my hand is and how big my glove is, I don't like the way sometimes I can't hit anything. All right. So as we're getting going here, can already hear a little bit of the stereo. Stereo is actually really good on these bikes. Uh, you can listen to them at two or three in terms of where they are. And to be honest, you can hear them just fine. Uh, so when you go through here, you can see that you have your information here. This is where you touch your layers. You can have your weather layer on and your traffic layer. Go ahead and turn them both on. Being that we are absolutely sunny and boring just like the last few rides I had there's not going to be anything on here today you can grab that Indian logo you can drop it down you can see you can turn it to auto brightness which I will do because that is just too darn bright I don't need to see that right now when it gets out in the sun it will adjust itself you got your tour mode your standard mode and your sport mode on your throttle how it acts notifications on the motorcycle when you go through on the left side left side you'll click here there's where your radio is now go over here. You can honestly modify what side by side by hitting this little uh, deal right there. And you can choose the screen that goes on there. So if you want to have the battery or the compass, you can do compass when you tap on it. Now, right now we're not moving, so we can't add that widget. So I'm going to add, uh, let's see here. Go ahead and add this widget over here. There we go. Drag that over there. All right. All right, there you go. So you can see the widgets and you can have your multiple different widgets, multiple different ways of doing this. So you can go through and you see all your current rides and all that fun stuff. So you can add so many different things and customize it. Of course, if you see the radio, if you go through and you have something connected to it, like your phone or something like that, the right trigger helps you carry that. So left trigger, you get there, right trigger will drop up the screen that has your artists and fun stuff like that. That's in the background. Something you cannot do when you're on radio mode. All that good stuff. Of course, you can go right to it. Lots of um, connected Bluetooth there right to there or right to there. So you can honestly hit those buttons as well. Information button, once you hit the right screen, you can go up and down on anything and select it through that one. This is your volume up, volume down, seek and scan and mute. Uh, of course, you got your turn signals here, flash the pass up on bottom, regular, horn, all that there. This is, of course, your windshield adjustment, double down. We'll take it all the way to its lowest position, double up. We'll take it all the way to the highest position. Cruise control set from the right hand grip as well. Down here, heated grips. You can control the uh, heat by turning that on. Go up, go down right there. And your lockable saddlebags. Saddlebags are quite large on this machine. You can see there. And they're all one touch. You can pop that open. Big trunk for you as well. All right, so that's all the features of the Roadmaster dark horse and we're going to go ahead and start mounting her up I'll go ahead and step on honey badger if you want to get over here we'll get ready to ride here all right 
guy. One touch, starts her right up. Right now I'm gonna leave the windshield in its upright position. All right, you ready to go back there? Yep. All right. Now, of course, the Roadmaster this year for 2020 is equipped with the 116 Thunderstroke. All right, we're going to take her into the middle of downtown. We're the passenger on board. Of course, when you have people walking out in front of you like that, it does help you test the <laughs> stability of the motorcycle and everything when you have the extra weight. Now, right now, I have this set to touring mode. It is not set into the high modes right now or sport mode. Once again, if you're going through those modes, they do not change the horsepower or anything. All they do is they change the position of where this responds. So whenever it's in touring mode, it takes about a quarter of an inch to, or maybe an eighth of an inch, not a quarter of an inch, not that far, to get this throttle to really start to act snippy. Whenever you're in sport mode, it reacts immediately. When you're in the other, then it actually, the touring mode, or not touring mode, but rain mode, is when it actually does eliminate a lot of that throttle, and that way you don't kick up on yourself. So we're just gonna leave it in touring mode for now. All right, so as the rider, when you have a passenger on this machine, this one is actually feeling quite nice. We didn't do any adjustment. This is an air adjustable shock. The air is on the left side. So you open up the little uh, panel there and it's got the air chuck on there. It also has how much you need to put in there. It has a little diagram of how much weight you are and how much air coincides with that for the best suspension setting. So we just have it on the stock setting to be honest, and it rides quite nice for the rider. The bike is actually extremely nimble and very precise still. Despite the fact it's so large, it doesn't feel massive or large. It feels perfect. I'm going over these broken, broken roads of Oklahoma, and as you can see, dragging a little bit of the floorboard there. Handles it just fine. All right, so Honey Budger, how's it feel on the back of the bike when we're going over that kind of broken concrete there? I mean, it's very light. Um, as far as the bumps, it's not that bad at all. Um, it's pretty smooth back here. It feels really good. The seat's really comfortable. So I like the fact that I don't have to really hold on. <laughs> so but it's very smooth. Excellent. So as you can see right here, and I'll kind of use this to show you, you can back off the uh, map there and you can see there's the traffic layer loading itself up. So the way the ride command works versus the 2019s and before, this one actually has a cellular subscription. So it's getting its data live. So it will be able to put their um, weather and also the traffic on there immediately. And uh, the thing is though, is that unlike the other ride command, since it is cellular based, it does have a subscription service that will eventually kick in two years after you purchase the motorcycle. So that is something to think about if you want to have all the live layers and all the extra things coming through, is that you will need a subscription to keep those going. All right, so now we're up on the highway here. We're getting at 60 miles an hour, currently in fifth gear, not even in sixth gear. Motorcycle is with passenger under two or under 3,000 RPM, excuse me, at 65 miles an hour. Not even taxing the 116 engine at all. We pop that into sixth gear, we're going to hold that 65 miles an hour, right around 2,400 ish RPM. So, still under 2,500 RPM, quite nicely motoring around. There's no vibrations at all that I can feel. This motor is very smooth. And right now, this pocket of air, it's brilliant. Now, as a passenger, can you feel any wind coming off or any coldness? Because we do have a little bit of a cooler day today. It's around 56 degrees or so 
How does it feel back there? Yeah, not really. I mean, I do feel a little bit of wind here and there, but it's nothing. I mean, as if I was just in front, it's like having a windshield in front of you. It's actually not bad. And how about the uh, vibration from the engine? Is there anything that transfers to the passenger or uh, like through the foot pegs or through the seat or anything like that? Uh, not really. I mean, I feel a little bit of the vibration through the seat, but it's nothing that's bothering me. Um, it just kind of feels like riding a motorcycle on a standard day. So it's really not bad back here. All right, there you go. So pretty smooth for the passenger as well. Just a little bit of vibrations here and there. Like I said, you will obviously feel vibrations on a V twin engine, but it's a very smooth engine. And the power of the 116, it, it's weird that it doesn't seem like it's much more, but when you start looking at how much the engine is working versus uh, what the uh, 111 is doing, then you realize that this one does have a lot more to offer. And I mean, it, it, I'm crawling up in speed here and there and I don't want to. It's just because of how easy this one is to get speed and how the fact it doesn't feel like it's gaining that speed, it's just kind of sneaking up on me. Now overall, with the passenger and everything, I don't see, I can kind of see a little bit of the arm back there from her in the mirror and all that, but that's an adjustment. There we go. Now I can see the lane, not the arm. So these are very nicely out there. You can see perfectly around you. Very, very good visible on the mirrors. Uh, with the lowers on, I don't have those open right now. I don't really have any engine heat coming off right now. Passenger, do you feel anything? Uh, no, no, not feeling anything at all, actually. It's, it's very comfortable back here. Good, so no engine heat getting to the passenger at this time as well. As you can see, riding through the city, is, is a great way to test this because you got traffic coming in and out, you got people cutting in and out. You have things you got to do and you're downshifting and you're upshifting. It's a perfect just test of this motorcycle. So at 50 miles an hour, you know, normal city street speed, I'm actually in fourth gear and I'm going barely above 2,500 RPM or right around 2,500 RPM, around 50 miles an hour. That's pretty impressive. This engine just does not really seem to need to work. Even with the added weight of a passenger, actually doing just fine. Once we clear the construction zone here, we'll get a little bit more fun with it. Once again, engine braking, absolutely fantastic. All right, now we're clear of that. We're gonna start getting going here. As you can see, it walked right up. I'm in fifth gear, 70 miles an hour, right at 3000 RPM. That's about where 111 is in sixth gear for 70 miles an hour is around 3,000 RPM or so, a little bit closer to it. This one literally just fine. Now to activate your cruise control, you press in on that stick and you go to the left, it'll set that cruise control. And to go down, you just kind of press to the left again to go back up and speed, you can hold it to the right and then you can lift it and it will set you back to where you're going. All right, so while we're doing this, we're gonna go ahead. We're going into the north winds today, so I'm gonna drop the windshield all the way down. All right, as a rider, there's definitely more wind buffeting toward the top of the uh, helmet that I can definitely hear now. Passenger, how about the wind now that we don't have as much windshield in front of us? Yeah, it's got a little bit of buffeting up at the top, um, but it's still not anything unbearable. So I think having the rider in front of you, I mean, it helps a little bit with that, but it's not bad. Alrighty, so we'll kind of go. Tell me when you stop feeling a buffeting. How about that? I know we're about to run out of wind here, but that's that's better. Yeah. They're right there. So not quite all the way up, and the passengers protected. And then I've got less buffet, but I can still hear it. Now remember, I am six foot tall, around 209 pounds, 32 inch inseam. And that'll tell you where I sit on this bike. So when I go all the way up, actually it was all the way up about when she said it. So it's a little bit less and then all the way up for the rider to stop really feeling a buffeting there. This is all being done by engine brake. A little bit of regular braking there. Chassis is still very compliant whenever you go into a turn in. I will have to say, and this is just me being nitpicky because I do like a good hill toe shifter. This bike needs a hill toe shifter. For as big as it is and as lumbering as it is, it'd be much nicer to have that instead of try to get up there. I will though have to say that for as large size 14 feet, it's fantastic to actually have a floorboard that's big enough to handle your size 14 feet. 
Um, there's some issues with Harley Davidsons in some cases. Mostly their soft tail models or their smaller models where uh, the the floorboard's not long enough, and I actually can bridge the hill toe shifter and not fit between them for as long as my foot is. Now, granted, they've taken a lot of those hill toe shifters off. They've done that even on their touring line, just like Indians. And um, you know, the floorboards are still a little bit smaller on the Harleys. You don't have as much room to work with, but at least. Uh, on a touring bike on a Harley, I don't have as much problem with the hill toe shifter if it is equipped. Now I will say Indian, I have I have an Indian now actually with a aftermarket um, hill toe shifter and it actually works just fine. Everything still fits. So if you add it on there, if you got a large foot, you don't have to worry about that room as well. As you can see, it gets up to speed quite nicely. Rips and roars and goes, and it doesn't matter if there's a passenger there or not. I have to say that this bike is still very light on its feet. I'm gonna go ahead and go down this horrible part of the road here. All right, passenger, when we're in this horrible side of the road, what do you think? It's not bad at all, actually. It feels, it's, it's pretty smooth. I mean, surprisingly for all of those little areas. Now, there was a bump back there that was a bit bigger. Uh, they kind of knocked me a little off the seat there, but it, it's still not that bad. Well, there you go. So still getting quite a bit of good suspension. Like I said, this is before it's set. This is still a zero pound of air shock. So we haven't added anything to it to uh, cause anything. Now you'll see this engine does not like lugging about at six gear under 2000 RPM. It doesn't feel quite as right. Now as a rider, I could definitely feel more vibrations. How about as a passenger back there whenever we're going in six gear at 45? Are you feeling that same vibration? I mean, no, it's really smooth. I mean, I, I honestly don't feel that much buzzing at all. Okay, so it doesn't transmit back to the passenger when it's lugging like that, like it does to the rider. Now the braking on this motorcycle is actually phenomenal. I'm trying to be as smooth as possible since I am carrying a passenger today. Don't want to throw her around, so that just wouldn't be nice. I love all these widgets that you got. I didn't realize that that had a little tachometer in the widget too with a gear indicator. That's pretty cool. So riding around on the Roadmaster with the 116, the Dark Horse is just a phenomenal ride. It's one of the better touring bikes that's out there. I know it's one of the higher dollar touring bikes out there too, but the 116 engine is a fantastic engine. For a V-Twin, I don't think there's anything smoother out there right now um, that's in the touring chassis. I've been on the Eluder uh, from Yamaha, and I've been on, of course, gold wings and stuff but gold wings are not v twins the eluders are the eluder definitely is a short shift machine it just doesn't feel quite as potent as the 116 here and it doesn't feel definitely as refined as the 116 but there's nothing wrong with the uh, the yamahas at all they're great bikes uh, but i just believe the way this one is and the balance of this one too even with a passenger it doesn't feel like anything's happening back there at all it just feels like a normal everyday ride to me. Like I said, being able to step all this down with just engine braking alone is phenomenal too. All right, let's see how she does getting on the interstate and getting a little bit of turns here. Not even heavy at all. Now maybe add in some uh, stuff to the saddlebags and stuff like that. We might be able to get a little bit more feel for, but when you just got a passenger, you're on zero air, it handles very, very well. Especially as the rider, you don't really, you feel a little bit, but the bike still handles so, so well. It's still very easy to get it to flick about. You can just barely press on the bar and it's already doing what you want it to do. That's pretty impressive. No bog down, no nothing. Just a nice, smooth 
transition. So Honey Badger, we're about to go over some of the most fun part of the road here. Let's see what you think of these big, big bumps, because they're, they're coming here. This will also test the power of the 116, because we don't have very much merge lane right now with all this construction. So we're going to get a little bit of loose, loose uh, asphalt. We're going to get a little bit of everything on this one. We're gonna take it easy here. All right, here's the first big bump. Here's the really big bump. Oh, jeez. <laughs> that one did throw me. <laughs> now, I did stay on the seat, but it did knock the passenger about. Now, like I said, there's a lot of loose gravel here. I need to get ready to go here and... All right. Not very much moving lanes here, but he'll get up to speed and get into the traffic just fine. <laughs> so we did find at least one bump <laughs> that'll throw a passenger for a loop is what we did. But that, granted, that was more like a speed hump versus a pothole. It's, it's humps up instead of goes down. So that might be what did it. Yep. All right, so as a passenger, Honey Badger, what is your final say on this motorcycle? I like it. I think it's very comfortable overall. Um, of course, you know, I think on any bike, it wouldn't matter. Like if you hit a bump that big, you're probably going to get thrown just a little bit. Um, but even so, I came back on a soft landing. The seat's amazing. I like the, the way that this thing moves. It's very fast. It gets up to speed. That makes me happy. So I really like this bike overall. All right, and as the rider, I can agree. If you're looking for a long range touring bike and you're gonna be carrying some passengers and some extra weight, take a look at the Indian Roadmaster. It is a bigger bike than the Goldwing. It's a bigger bike than several others. Uh, weighs actually just under the Roadstar as well. So it is a pretty heavy bike. It's up there in the 940 range, but it doesn't feel like it. It's a motorcycle that literally feels like it's only a 700 pounder unless you're off the bike trying to push it around. But when it's up on its wheels, it's very well balanced. It's a precision built machine, does very well. And the 116 engine is absolutely just a mountain of power. It's everywhere in this thing. Even in top gear, you can get away from traffic. If you're at 60 miles an hour, you just rip it and it starts to go. It doesn't even take a second to, to spin up, it just goes. And that's a very impressive thing. So once again, this here is the Rabbit Hedgehog and... Honey Badger. And we're doing the Indian Roadmaster Dark Horse 116 with passenger. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. We'll be happy to get back with you and uh, try to answer everything that we can. And also just remember, I am not paid by this dealership to do what I am doing. I'm not a member of that dealership. I am not an owner. I'm not a worker or anything. I'm just a madman with an opinion that loves to do what he does. At any rate, keep that shiny side up, folks. We'll catch you on the next review. What's up, everybody? This is the Rabbit Hedgehog, and once again, thank you for watching our videos. If you like what you see, please like, subscribe, mash that notification button. That way you get the latest content as it comes out from us. We are thankful for our viewers. We are also thankful for our sponsors. We have Law Tigers, Motorcycle Lawyers Nationwide. Right now, they are out there riding with you because they are part of our community. But if you are in trouble and in need of assistance with any accident or any motorcycle law question, give them a call. They are at 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 1-844-533-2914 or visit lawtigers.com. Also, if you're looking to protect your engine with quality synthetic lubricants, Give Doug Crawford a call. He's with USA Synthetics distributing AMS oil products. He can be found at usasynthetics.com or 405-388-6170. And if you're looking to protect yourself, protect your ride, or protect your house, whatever it might be, give Derek Inlow and Associates a call if you're in the Oklahoma area. He will be able to help you out and protect whatever you might have. 
Give them a call at 405-261-1010 or visit InlowInsurance.com. Once again, thank you for watching. Have a great day, and we'll catch you on that next ride.